You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz. This is AfterBuzz TV's Sherlock After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Sherlock After Show. Hey there, Sherlock fans. You know what time it is. It is time for the Sherlock Season 3 After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. Yeah! So excited. Finally, there's a Sherlock AfterBuzz TV After Show. Finally, there's a Season 3. We waited two whole years to see it, and it's finally airing in the U.S., so we're starting to talk about it. I'm Matt Lieberman. Joining me on the panel all season long, fantastic group of ladies. Uh, First of all, Miss Yell Teagle on the panel. Uh, Megan Salinas. Hey guys. And uh, Marissa Serafini. What's up, everyone? Oh man, so uh, so excited about this. I personally, I, I know everyone has different viewing habits. Obviously, the show aired a few weeks ago overseas. I wanted to wait until right before we did this to watch it, so I didn't watch it until today. Uh, and I'm still reeling. It's so, <laughs> it, it was so funny and so jam packed. Uh, and just so much fun, and just great to be back with these characters. Yeah. I missed them, mm-hmm. and like I know, I know, I know. Everyone wants to know how did Sherlock survive? But then once we got swept up in it, I almost it didn't matter as much as just like I'm glad he's back. <laughs> yeah. Well, even John said like I don't care how you came back. <laughs> I want to know why. why? Yeah. Um, so we open, before we get into like formal topics, you know, we open with this, um, this elaborate, uh, <laughs> bungee jump, bungee jump <laughs> like staging of like how he could have possibly survived. And I'm watching this in horror, like, no, no, <laughs> this is dumb. Please, no, don't be real, don't be real. I'm like, oh no, it's just Anderson's fantasy. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, uh, that whole story, I was willing to, I was be- willing to allow it. I was watching, going, okay, okay, yeah. sure, why not? And then he kisses Molly, <laughs> and everyone, because I have a viewing party when I watch shows of like this. Uh, Everyone in my entire apartment went, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we knew it wasn't real. Yeah. <laughs> that was the moment. See, for me, I as like I, I was making dinner while I was watching it, but I was like my my eyes were like locked onto the screen. Now I'm worried about your dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was fine, probably. <laughs> I did light my apartment on fire, but that's a story for another that's day. That's irrelevant. But uh, <laughs> I was I just started laughing so hard with the bungee with the bungee cord because I, I, at first I was like, "Oh, wait." And then my brain kicked in and I was like, like, wait, no, the gunman who had his, you know, who was pointing at John would have seen him recoil up and right. land and like And, like, the hypnotist <laughs> and the resetting of the watch. Yeah. And I'm like, he would have realized eventually. Uh, bleh, bleh. Uh, what did you think, Marissa? Uh, well, I, I did like, and we'll get more into it, how they had the three different explanations of mm-hmm. this. But the first one, I thought bungee jumping, that's not as analytical as... Sherlock usually is when he plans his elaborate escapes, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, that seems more adventurous than analytical, and I automatically I didn't think that they would start a whole new season with that kind of extravagant type of scene. Yeah. I don't, I didn't find that believable as the first opening scene. Yeah. And, you know, well, you know, it wasn't meant to be. We, right. It ultimately <laughs> was a big joke. We got Anderson with his whole group of, like, Sherlock <laughs> death nerds. The Sherlock empty truthers. The Empty Hearse Club with their hats, and they're all so cute yep. and, like, they gothic and They should have a mixer with a Linda lot. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> That's what I was I loved like the the gothic girl's accent. I thought that was she was like adorable. That is Sharon Rooney from Sharon Rooney? My Mad Fat Diary. She is amazing. Oh man, I loved her. She's, She's great. great. So not long after this, right, we kind of meet up with John Watson again. We get a sense of his uh, mental state. 
And, you know, he's like, he's finally, finally starting to come to terms with what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, he's moved on. He's got a life now. He's got a potential wife now. Uh, he's got a thick old mustache. Oh. He's gone full Watson. You never <laughs> go full Watson. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It ages him up, and we like our doctors clean shaven. Uh, <laughs> doctor Who, anyone? Anyway. Uh, That's true. Yeah. No, no doctor with a beard. Sir, not for a while. No. no, not ever. No, you think you get a beard and you think the master. Yeah. A time lord with a beard is is an evil time yeah, lord. That's exactly. what I've learned. Or he's been in prison. Or he's been in prison for a long time. <laughs> yeah. That's sure. true. Or uh, all time has stopped. And, <laughs> yeah. Regardless, <laughs> way off t- tangent. That's a tangent. So, um, obviously, in order to have Sherlock return, he has to return from somewhere, and he is caught in this like crazy night vision. Uh, <laughs> you know, be surrounded. And um, one of the things that I'm so happy is, is like that I almost forgot how much I love about this show is the style is so distinct yes. and so beautifully visual, and like there. They're always trying to just keep you on the edge of your seat. Even when something is supposedly boring, you're looking for details. Yeah, it's fast-paced, and it's very modern. I love all the text on the oh, screen. Yeah. And, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's not something where you pull up an, you know, your computer and you start like Facebooking while it's on in the background. No, you pay attention. You pay attention nonstop. And, and it's it's a reflection of what Sherlock is seeing because he is a fast thinker, and he's he just sees every little detail in a matter of milliseconds, and we get into his mind and how he sees things and how he deduces and processes things. So I loved how they get the visual aspect so the audience can understand him more. Yeah. yeah. And what I, I loved even more is, um, especially once we get into the restaurant, which we're going to get more into in, in a second, uh, you see almost like an explosion of information. Instead of like little things, it's just like a cloud of words all at once. Like when he examines Mary, Mm -hmm. it's like all this information shooting up at you. You can't absorb it all in one second. He can barely absorb it all. And he's Sherlock Holmes, you know. Um, Yeah, they've kind of gone a bit bigger and grander with the uh, with the words on screen. I feel like season. that's what took them two years. <laughs> that's what t- is the technology. <laughs> is they were like, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if we showed you this? Okay, it's going to take us two years, yeah. but we'll make it amazing. Oh, they'll wait. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. It's it's what uh, the Wachowskis could have could have done with the Matrix sequels. Yes. Give it a few more years. <laughs> Give it a few more years. Let's develop the technology. Yeah. Anyway, so we've got him. He's being beaten. Uh, he's got like gray, <laughs> like this dank gray wig. Big, like almost out of uh, the fifth, uh, the fifth estate, the movie that he did this year, um, and uh, he he whispers something to his torturer, and I'm just like gleeful as like uh, he says he says my wife is cheating on me uh, with the coffin maker next door, and if I leave now, I'll catch them at it. I knew it. <laughs> Um, like and I'm just and that like, makes it totally okay for him to just leave his job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Well, I mean, as as, as excuses go, it's a pretty good. <laughs> Not one. a bad one. Uh, yeah, chief. I'm sorry. Uh, my wife was cheating on me. I could only catch her if I left at this time. And, right. Uh, well, he was right. So uh, <laughs> I just gotta say, uh, having Benedict Cumberbatch shirtless was a hundred percent a gift to the fans. <laughs> that was we made you wait for two years. Here's Here him without go. a shirt. The one thing you've been dying to see. You didn't get Ta-da. enough of it from uh, the season opener last year, or la- the last season. Uh, he was like completely naked, wrapped in a sheet. I'm sorry, oh, you that's can never <laughs> get enough wonderful. of it? You can never get enough? No. Okay. Um, I'm sure that there are a bunch of Benedict, what are they, Cumber Babes? Uh, yeah. yeah the, is the I think that's the t- is the new term. one Because he doesn't, he didn't like the old term. He really didn't like the old term. Yeah. So the Cumber Babes, this, this, they will agree with me that this was their gift for waiting. Okay. Okay. And, and that you can never get enough. I would call the whole episode a gift for waiting. The whole episode was a gift for waiting. This was the cherry on top. Okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> yeah, wet, uh, <laughs> emaciated, you know, out in the woods. Okay, He's fine. So I, I understand the appeal. <laughs> Whatever. 
fine. All right. Uh, but, Moving on. You know, his uh, interrogator turns out, of course, to be none other than Mycroft Holmes. Shock. Yeah, shock of the year. Yeah. Um, who uh, learned a whole language in a matter of hours to... <laughs> getting slow. <laughs> yeah, getting slow. Jeez. I'd never thought of Mycroft as the smarter brother, but that they both referred to it mm -hmm. in this episode. Yeah. Like, even Sherlock acknowledges it, or at the very least acknowledges that that's what Mycroft believes. Well, no, he said that, uh, that Sherlock used to think he was stupid. Stupid, until they met other people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Which, like... He calls even further into question after we meet his par their parents later <laughs> in the show. So it's like, why were they so isolated if they have such ordinary parents? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe don't know. they grew up in the country. Maybe yeah. they just there just weren't any other kids around. Yeah, I guess so. So but their parents were adorable. Oh, <laughs> oh so so awesome. you, know when, the, you know who those people were? Uh uh. Those were Benedict Cumberbatch's parents. Yeah. They were his actual parents? Those were his, his parents. Oh, my who gosh. Are acting they royalty. Are actors, yeah. A little bit. Not acting royalty royalty, but they're, they've been around. They're royal in the actor world. Yes. I'll allow it. In the, uh, in the British, <laughs> British acting world. Yeah. Um, so, Those are his parents. Oh, well, that's so cool. Yeah. I had yeah. no idea. That's so wonderful. That's lovely. <laughs> so he's uh, very uh, very quickly whisked back to, uh, to London. And uh, the whiskers are whisked off his face. Yeah. And uh, he's like, well, I got to go check on John. He's like, and uh, Mycroft is like, well, I mean, he's moved on with his life. He's like, what life? Aww. I've been gone. Yeah. Sick burn number one. <laughs> Let's chuck it right up. <laughs> Poor John. I know. Well, okay. First of all, in this relationship, he allows himself to be abused. Yeah. He could walk away, especially after what has been perpetrated between the Reichenbach fall and the empty hearse. Yeah. Like, when Sherlock shows up again, <laughs> he has every right to <laughs> walk the F away. But it's Sherlock, and you feel special when you're around Sherlock, so why would you? <laughs> But he's not gay. He's not gay. He just wants to be around him. Yeah. And, uh, you it's know. It's called friendship, man. Yeah. Oh? It's called a bromance. <laughs> Is that what it's called? I, I would say bromance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's friendship. Okay. That is friendship. Spending all this time together, going on adventures, yeah. sharing tea. Spending your life with them, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Friendship. Yell and Megan are uh, friends for life. <laughs> I wish I knew how to quit you, Sherlock. I wish I knew. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that there was, there, there's got to be a, a broke back Sherlock somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there is. Or a on Sherlock Tumblr. Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> totally. On the sick world of Tumblr. Sick, sad Tumblr. <laughs> so, um, I loved this sequence. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so first of all, John goes back to Mrs. Hudson and lets her know that he's uh, proposing to his girlfriend, uh, and she's kind of like, oh, like that, that's so lovely, but also disbelief. And we get a sense of how long it's been. It's been two years. Two years, and, and John has completely fallen off the face. Mm -hmm. He hasn't really been in touch with Mrs. Hudson. Kind of rude, but, you know. Understandable. Everyone grieves in their own way. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he even told her when they were visiting Sherlock's grave, he's like, I can't go back there, you know, not, not for a while. Mm -hmm. And so, but I didn't think it would be two years. But well, yeah. We waited two years. We were also mourning for two years. Oh, yeah. I guess the world moved along at the same pace as yeah. Sherlock. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't think about that. I was like, oh, it's been two years. It has been two years. <laughs> Dang. So, he goes to this very nice restaurant uh, in an attempt to propose to Mary, and uh, Sherlock waltzes in, and he concocts this elaborate <laughs> disguise, and he's like, oh, isn't John going to be so pleased? He's going to laugh so hard when I reveal Aww. myself. Aww. I'm so clever. And he does the eyeliner, the terrible <laughs> eyeliner mustache. Um, just like, it's just gross looking. Yeah. And it's so funny, too, because, you know, John doesn't even acknowledge him. You know, he's just the waiter. And yeah. so Sherlock's, like, taken aback, like, ah, he didn't notice my surprise. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> clever. I am being really clever here. No one's around to see it. Uh, but that's like, exactly what he was thinking, too. <laughs> Yes. Acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. So he goes and he gets, he goes and he actually gets the champagne and he comes back. And I'm like, no one in this restaurant is noticing that there's just a new waiter? Nope. Nope. Nobody's uh, complaining about the stuff he stole. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, there, there's a guy somewhere being like, a uh, very I nice had man had my, took my tie. I yeah. had a tie. No, nothing. Um, 
and uh, Mary gets there, and John is like stammering over his words, and uh, we'll, we'll get more into the characterization of Mary in a second, mm -hmm. um, but I personally, I liked her a whole bunch. Uh, and uh, he's trying to get the words out, and Sherlock whisks off his glasses, and he, and he says, you know, like, but an old friend, perhaps? <laughs> and John looks at him, and I'm just like, oh my god, he is gonna sock him in the face. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. I was like, oh, Sherlock is about to get punched. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm waiting for him to swear. And I'm like, I know that's not like BBC One style. That's not PBS masterpiece we mystery did see style. Them, we did see them kind of swear later on. A yes. Uh, we, got a, we got a, we got a, and off. Yes. Uh, very, very cute and Adorable. fun. Yeah. Um, but John is like shaking and I feel like almost like, oh my god, his PTSD is going to come back. Right. Or it has come back. And uh, he he's just distraught. Like, how were you guys feeling seeing him like that? I felt so bad for him. I did too. I, I was sitting here like, I knew it was a bad plan from the get-go. Um, you know, trying to be funny, you know, trying to be clever with yeah. it. But honestly, it's like, you have no idea how much you being gone hurt your friend, how much your death hurt your friend. And like he said, you know, allowing him to grieve for two years. Like, and it's just like, ah, and then popping up and going, surprise! That's, yeah. that's not the best way to ease him back into it. I spent the entire time just waiting for the punch. Yeah. That's I don't think I heard a single word cuz I was going hit him. Hit him. <laughs> hit, hit his dumb face. <laughs> yeah, hit I don't his know how so face. <laughs> so smart can be so stupid. <laughs> um, I mean it's like it's like I think Mary said later on she's like you don't understand human nature, do you? Right. And he's like human no, <laughs> nature no. no. <laughs> yeah, or nature no, human no. And uh he tackles him to the ground and is just ready to slaughter him. <laughs> and, He's like throttling. Yeah, and smash cut to another restaurant. Oh, so um, this was a brilliant sequence. Wonderful of sequence. And like you know, Mark Gatiss scripted this episode. Normally, I'm kind of lukewarm on his Sherlock episodes, and I thought this was easily his best one. Yeah. Um, some of his finest work I've ever seen. Really well paced and. Uh, Honestly, a big departure for how this show flows. Like every other episode has been a straight up mystery. You know, even the the pilot where we're meeting our characters is still a mystery that we're solving. And here, we don't really get any firm mysteries. We have this terrorist plot, but we don't have like something like a real like Oh man, I don't know how he did that until halfway through the episode when we see uh this guy get on this train and then not yeah. reappear. Um I really like the way this episode was written. I really like, uh, I think, most of his episodes. I, I think that he has this different style that is just so fascinating to watch mm. and to see. And I think that this episode specifically, uh, at least the first half of it was, we know we made you wait for two years. Here are all the things you've been asking and, and annoyed about, and we <laughs> want to deal with it because we do care. Because right. we only get three episodes a season to please you. Yeah. But at the same time, refusing to give any firm answers. Oh, of course. Right. You know, even when we get our reveal, re real reveal later on, beyond all the fake reveals. <laughs> um, that one where Sherlock and Moriarty kiss was so <laughs> goddamn funny. That was the best. I nearly fell off my couch. I believe 100% so that that was the real one. Yes, <laughs> that is the real one. And I just love how like Moriarty's giggling. Yeah. They're, They're giggling. both he's like, giggling he's like, and Sherlock's shut shut like, up. blowing. Oh, I almost hit the mic. Yeah. Um, he's like, come on, I'm trying to do this. So funny. Um, but yeah, it was very cleverly structured. We didn't get any firm answers, but at the same time, all of our questions do have answers. Right. It's just, do we choose to believe them or not? Yes. Um, so we go to the second restaurant. Sherlock starts <laughs> to actually explain it, and John's like, no, I don't care how. I don't care how. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is why. Why didn't you tell me? Because it seems like everyone else seems to know how many people know. And it was uh, Mycroft and Molly and 25. <laughs> what, did, what did he call them? Like 25 operatives? Tramps. Or no, he called them tramps. <laughs> like as if he was like the other woman yeah. who had just been jilted. And he's just been sleeping around with all these people who know how he was alive. And uh, I felt his pain. <laughs> 
the deep. <laughs> what did you think, Marissa? Um, I, I loved the, yes, the smash cuts between, because as you said, the, uh, this was a different type of paced episode compared to the other past episodes where there's, you know, single one crime. But I think for a return episode, coming back after two, two years, it was really fast paced with the editing and all the story. It really strung us along, but it kept our attention throughout the whole thing and like the fast pace from here to here. And even like when you when we'll get to it, but on the train, you know, that was resolved quickly too. So like everything was so fast paced and it had beginning, middle, and, and end. But the the return of Sherlock, I, I thought it was interesting for his character to like play it off as in a comedic way. Yeah. And that doesn't really, that seems out of character for Sherlock because we know he's such a serious guy and then he, he's taking a serious thing and making it funny. I thought that was interesting. But I love, I love the play on with Sherlock and, and, and Watson when they're finally back together and just they're, they're already at each other's throats and you, you can see the chemistry. Yeah. And um, I, I love how they just, when they're finally back together and then they separate again, you can, they're back in each other's lives, but you can hear them and th- and they can like think what each other's feeling and talking about them. And I loved how they played that out. Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was definitely like a twisty, turny ride. And frankly, I, I wasn't surprised that he went that it, they went for comedy because like he is a smart ass. <laughs> yeah, like, but, yeah, but I agree with Marissa that it was very out of character for him to do like comedic uh like the french waiter the was french very, thing was a it bit was, it was very like you know sitcom comedy and that's not sherlock. that's not sherlock that's not sherlock the show and that's not sherlock the character but we're also talking about the relationship between sherlock holmes and john watson and he sees this uh, like or at least the sherlock that we saw in this episode he sees what happened almost as a prank like he's pulling a prank right now with the with the with the costume, but then he's also treating his whole disappearance like a prank. He, on some level, thinks that John is going to be amazed and thrilled and like you bugger and like you know like like shove him and be like, how did you do that? Where did you go? Instead of the actual gravity of the situation. Right. And uh, you know, I don't know. I'm willing to forgive it if only because it made. John's pain that much more real Mm -hmm. and we needed to see it exacerbated and we needed Sherlock to see it and understand it and it really would take something as obtuse as playing this prank in this restaurant and thinking that he's going to get applause for him to actually actually sink in that wait this isn't the reaction that I expected Mm -hmm. that that's why I forgive it personally interesting yeah um so John refuses to go back and to forgive him, and uh, he kind of storms off. And Mary says she'll she'll talk him down. She'll get him to uh, to understand, you know. So in the meantime, Sherlock takes on a new partner in the form of Molly. <laughs> oh, poor Molly. Poor sweet Molly. Every time Molly is on screen throughout this entire series, usually I'm just sitting there going. Oh, oh, Molly. Molly, I just want the best for her. And, I mean, apparently she's got it. She's moved on, people, okay? Yeah. She's moved on. I love you, that I interaction, can't. though. When uh, Sherlock went to ask her, like, you know, solve mysteries, and then she's like, have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes to show where their levels are at. With I know, but she's already married. She's well, married, engaged. and she's still... Okay, fine. <laughs> She's engaged. That could engaged. be. You know that if Sherlock was like, you know, Molly, I think we should have dinner. That engagement would end <laughs> right then and there. But but she's moved on. I can't think of a single thing about her or her fiance that would <laughs> ever trigger that she still it's has not, feelings it's for not Sherlock. Not like he and Sherlock have anything in common Nothing whatsoever. In common. I mean, right. the difference is really yeah. I, like let's 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 count like the nine differences. Day. Okay, nine day. Sherlock has black hair. Molly's fiance has. Uh, coal-colored hair, okay? <laughs> Sherlock is tall and thin. Uh, you know, this guy, he's... Uh, gangly. He's gangly. He's lanky, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. you know, he has kind of a height problem. Oh, he right? does. You know, Sherlock wears coats and scarves, and this guy is cold. It, it, is cold all the time. <laughs> you know, the one thing, this guy is a little bit young, isn't yeah. he? Oh, yeah. And, and Molly like- is not... She's like Sherlock's age. He seems a little young for her. 
<laughs> I don't know. I didn't pick up on a huge age difference. Maybe like I, eight I years tell. max. Eight years max. And I know that's kind. That's not small. Right. But I'm like that. It can't, it's not like he's in his early twenties. I mean, if you think about okay, back when she was dating Moriarty, um, oh. you know, like <laughs> they were they were around the same age and height. Oh no, he always read so much younger to me. Did he? Yeah, he always read to me as like a 24 year old wunderkind. Well, when we saw him almost make out with Sherlock, I realized that their age is very much uh, closer. Yeah, it made more sense. It made more sense. Maybe he just it, he just doesn't work out with Molly. He works out with Sherlock. I guess so. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just. I did. Oh, sorry, I did really like how um, when when Sherlock was asking her if you know he she wanted to essentially be his sidekick that it was a very it was very much like asking someone out to dinner. It was to to Sherlock asking somebody to solve mysteries with him is uh, as solve intimate. Solve crimes. Yes, solve crimes. Crimes, fight crimes. <laughs> Doing that is to him like what what really close people do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a relationship to Sherlock. Mm -hmm. It is a relationship. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, friendship, deep, meaningful, <laughs> loving, friendship. platonic friendship. <laughs> Okay. Sherlock is platonic. It is. Okay. Uh, just going to take a quick second, talk to the folks about iTunes. People, thank you for downloading this podcast or watching it on YouTube, streaming it on your devices. You rock. Go you. AfterBuzz TV has the best fans in the entire world. How do I know? They've been asking for a Sherlock podcast for years. And then what happened? We effing delivered. Holy crap. I've been asking it for years. Yeah. Marissa <laughs> Serafini has had the ear of our executive producers, and she has toiled night and day for you, the people, to make this happen. And finally it did. What can you do to pay back her time, her sweat, her tears, her sacrifice? <laughs> we don't want your money. We just want a little of your time. Go to iTunes, slap the show with a rating. I love five-star ratings. It's a full bar, you know? There's five of them. I like it. But hey, don't lie to yourself. Don't do it if that's not what you believe. <laughs> but if you don't believe that, maybe you should rethink leaving a rating. <laughs> Um, if, if you don't believe that, you should really re-listen to this. You should really re-listen to the podcast, all the funny bits, all the thoughtful bits, all the stuff about the camera work. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> leave a rating. Leave a review. It's super important. It's crucial. I'll tell you why. It's the only way that this podcast gets ranked on iTunes and on AfterBuzz TV, okay? We want to be the number one Sherlock podcast on iTunes. we got a long way to go. There's a whole bunch of them. We need your support. We also want to be the number one show on AfterBuzz TV. I think we can make it happen, people, because Sherlock has the best, most dynamic fans, yeah. I think, out of any show on television. You're so passionate. Show us the passion. Let us know what you think of the show. And, yeah, we would love to keep doing it. Yeah. Only three episodes this year. Hopefully we'll get more before 2016. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Rumor is. Rumor is. Rumor is. We will get more around December. What? So soon? A Christmas special? <laughs> Christmas special? I doubt it would be a Christmas special. That'd be Are you awesome. playing games with me, Yelty? <laughs> no, no. Where, where did you hear this? Where, where is this rumor coming from? I will because I know they're signed for a series four. I will find the articles and and definitely tweet them out. Please yeah. do, please yeah. do. So Make sure here, give there. the people and spell spell the name out. I will definitely so spell it out. so uh, give them your Twitter handle right now, just in case for whatever reason they don't finish this podcast. <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, <laughs> if you want to see the article that I claim I have read. <laughs> Uh, you should be following at Yell Teagle. That's Y A E L T Y G I E L. That's all of it okay. um, on Twitter. All right. And you're sure this is an article and not wishful thinking? You're not. You're not playing with us. I definitely don't think <laughs> I would have made that up. Okay. And I wouldn't have picked December I, if I was going to make it up. I tend to make things up when I don't know, so I, I always want to double check. Megan, you're live on the air. <laughs> the people know your secret. No. Be careful. I will also tweet out if I uh, can't find the article and I lied. Okay. I will let everyone know that I made the mistake. Okay. Everyone unfollow, yell, if she's like, <laughs> Yeah. For sure, yeah. I deserve that. Okay, so back to the show. Uh, okay, we need to talk about, we have a big new person in our lives. It was a dramatic entrance for some. Other people found her to be warm. Let's talk Mary. How are we feeling? What are we thinking? Let's open the room for discussion. Why don't you begin? Okay, personally, 
I found her to be warm and charming, and she kept up with John. And she also, she needled him when he needed it. She pushed him in the direction that she knew he wanted to go. She was very supportive. And she went right to Sherlock when he was in danger, when he was about to get burned to death. And she helped save him. I thought that rocked. Well, what I really liked... um I, I hope that they they that they keep her. Or, you know, obviously, you know, with the next episode, I I think she's here to stay. But I really liked haven't her too. I, I haven't seen it either, okay. but I saw the preview. Okay, I saw the preview for it, so we can talk more about that at the end of the and show. And we know what it's called. <laughs> but um, but I liked her. I thought she was very very sweet, and and you know very very um. She she doesn't you know she doesn't put up with any any nonsense and what I liked was when she got the message about John she figured out what kind of code it was yeah like before you know before Sherlock ever saw it she's like this is the kind of code it is like what do we need to do oh man now I kind of don't trust her is that okay Marissa what yeah. do you think about Mary I thought that was cool that Mary picked that up because and then um, so it makes me think that maybe she might be a part of something I don't know but she's she's smart and John knows how to pick her woman I was, I was gonna say yeah I hope that that means she's just clever I don't want yeah, her to be I don't evil. want her to be evil but at the same time here I want to hear what yell has to say and then I'm gonna speak my second piece all right I don't trust Mary at all. Oh, shoot. You think she's doing what Moriarty did with Molly? I think that there's something, something beneath whatever this exterior is of a warm, welcoming, charming woman. Mm -hmm. She's too good to be true? Not just that she's too good to be true. When uh, Sherlock does his real quick deduction, I uh, paused watched it, read everything with a friend of mine. We took notes. The oh, one all thing, the words? Yep. The one thing that stood out that didn't make a lot of sense because there was nothing to stand behind it. Yeah. Liar. Oh, snap. Mm. Liar is there. Mm. It's nice and big in the center. Um, everything else made more made sense. Stuff right. like, you know, she's a liberal dem and she's, a, you know, and, you yes. know, Only like child, it's, yeah. it's a child, clue yeah. hiding in plain sight for the eagle-eyed fans who want to pause because they threw up so much information at yeah. once, you might miss it. Yeah. And she knew what the code was. Oh, she was no. all too happy to see Sherlock show up instead of being pissed off that she, he basically almost re-crippled his friend, her fiancé. She also uh, is the person who meets Sherlock for the first time. I know she's heard stories about him. She's heard what he's like. Yeah. Meets him for the first time and is like, you know what? I like you. I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to chat no with you. And no one likes Sherlock. No one likes Sherlock. Oh my God. She is a wolf. <laughs> In very nice sheep's clothing. I'm sorry to say it. I don't trust her. Snap. Um, oh, and, poor John. And yeah. I, hope, I didn't want to sway everyone. But I, you I just wanted to sway <laughs> everyone. I didn't. I really liked having the opposite opinion. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I think uh, we should. We shouldn't be so trusting, Sherlockians. Oh. We shouldn't be so trusting. Boo! I wanted to have someone <laughs> nice for once. There's Let the John be happy. Yeah, <laughs> he deserves it. Not with that mustache. He did not. <laughs> that's true, but she didn't like Maybe it. Maybe that's what the way liar came up. She had been lying to John about the mustache. That's true. She had been lying to John about the mustache. Way to flip flop there, Matt. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to make it very clear. I now have doubts. But I would love for her to be normal and sweet and caring and great. Well, we'd all love for her to be that. I just don't think she is. Mm, okay. <laughs> that, that feel free to send hate mail to my Twitter. <laughs> great. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, at Y-A-E-L. T-Y-G-I-E-L. Yes, all those letters. Um, okay, so we have some a bit of a debate here about the nature of Mary. Um, you know, I, I hope that she's great. I hope that she, it all works out. Uh, we do have a wedding later this season, uh, and I'm sure we're going to get something significant happening there. Uh, so finally we get some scenes with Watson and Holmes alone again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is after the burning, after Sherlock saves him. And like, okay, am I the only one who for a hot second thought I saw Mycroft 
there when the kid starts screaming and then someone grabs the kid and is like calming them down. It looked like Mycroft to me. No, I think that was just her dad. Okay, because he had the mole and he had the nose and Mark Gatiss is many things. He is a man with a prominent nose. <laughs> it is the most prominent nose this side of Richard Armitage. <laughs> Or I'm talking about Richard Armitage in the actual Hobbit films. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I saw that, and then it, it didn't pay off later, so I was like, oh, I'm probably Maybe wrong. Not. Yeah. Um, so they're finally alone together, and it's like, it's great to, to see them together and to have, you know, Watson kind of like listening to Holmes natter on about the case and like ask about details and start figuring stuff out and it's like oh the gang's back yeah it's not perfect but they're back and they're investigating this uh terrorist plot um I'm like okay as we get deeper in the episode I'm like okay so uh we're doing V for Vendetta this week I <laughs> thought that too I was so excited <laughs> Well, because when they, because, um, you know, when it showed, you know, what they were doing, they were burning a Guy Fox effigy. I was like, oh, okay, that, like, be for vendetta then because yep. they actually that actually still is a tradition yeah um to to do that um to burn someone in effigy every november the 5th um and then you know started ta when they started talking about the train and everything too i was kind of like this all seems very familiar i expected natalie portman to pop out yeah. <laughs> just saying she was going to be in the train with a lever yeah. and he was just going to be lying there with roses yeah. and, and sherlock's like scarlet don't Carsons. do it yeah. Yeah. oh my god or no it would have been Lestrade in this case. If you That's think. true. If you're doing a perfect, <laughs> we're doing perfect map parallels, over, right? <laughs> but instead, we've got uh, we've got Sherlock and uh, Sherlock and Doctor Watson. Mm -hmm. uh, they're stuck in this train. Bomb about to go off, and all it looks like. It's all over for our daring duo. Sherlock knows many things, but he does not know how to disarm a bomb. <laughs> and, Which uh, I don't believe. <laughs> yeah, I didn't believe. Either. Really? No. But he's like the master of deduction. He's not necessarily, well, okay, fine. You deduce when you're solving a bomb or you're disarming it's a, a bomb. Yeah, and he loves puzzles. Yeah. I, I have to admit, too, I was like, of all the things to not know and not call the police and go down here, of all the things to not know, why? See, I thought it was so funny. It but was. Like it was hilarious. Humor. It was hilarious, and I think we we needed a little bit of levity, and it was really fun to see them go back and forth. And he's like, "Well, why don't you know how to solve it? You were in the army. I was a, I was doctor. a doctor and a soldier." As you like reminding us all the time. No, I, I love the line. Go go to your mind place. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Yeah. And he's like, "What? You think I just have disarming a bomb just stuck in there somewhere?" Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Right. I, uh, let me check. <laughs> that's why it was so surprising that he didn't. Yeah. Or so we thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we talk about how he disarmed the bomb? There's an off switch. <laughs> Since when? See, I and that, so that was TV. just such a, a simple out. And that was such a simple resolution to something. You know, I, I thought that was a quick fix. Yeah, I thought he was going to do something with the timer. And it's like, ah, oh, the day is saved because I... I Cut the red something. wire or something gonna, like that. I'm going to say this, and I may catch flack for it, but I feel like I feel like that's a Stephen Moffat influence of just like it doesn't matter if it's an easy out as long as the audience is having a good time and it makes sense within the story. That is very much a Moffatism. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that's like that's his fingerprints on the show. Um, and who Al knows? Although now that you say that, actually, even even with the whole you know story on how Sherlock survived, because we cut away from the bomb for a yeah. little bit to show how he actually survived, or how he's telling Anderson, and how right. he's telling Anderson how he actually survived, and Anderson is like, I'm not impressed, and then starts deconstructing it, going, Wait, that doesn't make any sense. If you know, if Watson had been standing a couple of feet over to the left, this whole plan wouldn't have worked, and. And it goes back to that whole thing where it doesn't really matter how it yeah. matters that he's back. And so, sorry, that's, oh no, go ahead. that's the thing about this episode that there were these three different theories, and I personally don't believe any of them, and I'm I'm satisfied because. You know what? Everyone had these theories, and I feel like they went and read everyone's theories online, and we're like, let's put little bits and pieces. Everyone will be happy, and no one really cares. Yeah. I mean... And honestly, even if they hadn't, no matter what explanation they did, no matter what they did... Yeah. 
the you're fans not would please, have the fans you're not would have said everybody, yeah. I could I did better. My <laughs> idea was better. What do right. you think, Marissa? Um yeah, I like like I said I thought it was an easy fix, but I didn't mind it. Yeah. And it went along with the um the storyline, but I thought it was interesting how they showed his uh his revelation of like how the, the how he survived right before how he's going to die again. <laughs> and I loved how they just took that and it wasn't to Watson, but it showed the audience how he survived. And even though he wasn't really explaining it, it was still an exposition for us. Yeah. I mean, it's it's basically, it's it's their way of saying, look, and, and I think we've already said this, but just like, whatever we say, you know, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or whether you buy it or whether you like it. The fact is, he did survive. It did require a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. It did require Mycroft, Molly, and 25 people. What story is really going to impress you or make you happy? Just be glad that he's back. And I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thrilled to have him back. I, I think that's why I've, I've, ex I've decided to accept that none of those stories are true. Okay. I've decided none of those are the real story. I, I don't know. I think the third one's more real. I think it, the third one might be real. Nope. Uh, I think the third one has more weight to it because it's honestly just Sherlock shrugging and going, it was just a magic trick. You know, there, it, there's nothing more to it than... Seen um, from a play. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's it. Whatever. None of, them are, <laughs> none of them are right. It's also the only one that comes from his lips. How dare you use logic? <laughs> That's true. This is a show Sherlock about a guy Holmes who has never lied logic. before. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Rule one: Sherlock lies. I don't Wait. think that's how that goes. <laughs> Nope, wrong show. <laughs> wrong, wrong show. That actually was when, I, after I finally, after I finally watched season two, I sat down and started thinking. I was like, "How is he going to survive?" Like, because the only thing I can think of is that the TARDIS would literally fly in and save it. <laughs> well, as, um, <laughs> it was not a fixed point in time. The Doctor could intervene. <laughs> as everyone who sent me Hulak over the break, oh, yeah. yeah, that thing freaks me out. Yes. <laughs> the mapped faces oh. onto wrong bodies. It just so looks creepy. so creepy. Creepy. Wait, what? Okay. What is this? So what they did, they made this Doctor Who and Sherlock crossover, like, eight-minute short film. And don't get me wrong, it's really impressive. What they did is really impressive. You don't necessarily see the seams, but they, they take, they rotoscope out, they take clips from Doctor Who and Sherlock of the Doctor and Sherlock Holmes, uh -huh. and then place them into each other's shows, but then they'll put different faces they'll put like uh, a sherlock line from like season two episode one on top of a body from ep season one episode three and it just looks huh. creepy it's really creepy i mean i'm impressed with what they did yeah all the fans everyone who's who locked is super excited and it's great yeah it's just terrifying to look at <laughs> it's the, is it the uncanny valley it thing? is the uncanny okay. valley because you see it and it looks real but you know it's fake it's so creepy. It's really creepy. <laughs> I'm going to have to YouTube that when I get home. I mean, YouTube tweet it. the it's link. It's very out. impressive. I definitely couldn't make it through the first, like, three minutes. I, it was giving me well, How long is it? It's like eight, eight minutes oh, okay. long. <laughs> I, I watched, like, five minutes. I couldn't anymore. It was creepy. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, so we're left with this lingering question at the end of the show. Who kidnapped John? Why? What's the purpose? And uh, we... We were left without without knowledge, and we see this guy sitting alone in his room, watching footage of Sherlock saving John, and um, I I couldn't tell. I mean, it's probably neither of them, but it looked like either Patrick Stewart in a wig <laughs> or Bill Nye. <Knight. laughs> I think probably neither of them yeah. is not this right. What you meant. It's neither of them. Great. <laughs> I would, okay. I would love to see Bill Nye in the show. <laughs> Me too. That would He's be a rad. wonderful actor. And Patrick Stewart. I can yeah. see them both in any Oh, my God. Yeah. Patrick Stewart in this show? Too great. Awesome. And how awesome was it to see uh, Sherlock in the hat and he comes out? Uh, you like being Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Big smile on his face. The smart ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back to the media. Yeah. Everyone knows he's alive. Yeah. What, uh, what did you think was going on? when um, he's investigating Anderson's fake crime 
and he's got this other voice in his head. Was that Mycroft's voice in his head? I thought it was John's voice. It was in John's his head. voice. Oh. Yeah, it sounded like John because this was right after their confrontation, and so that's clearly still affecting Sherlock. And mm-hmm. but you know, of course, he doesn't want to act like what other people had you know say like it matters to him. No, so yeah, and, and that's what I, I was trying to say earlier when. When they meet up and then they, you know, disagree and whatnot. But when uh, John Watson, he he's doing all those. Um well, it looks like physicals or when he's with his patients or yeah. whatnot. Oh, the undescended think- testicle. <laughs> yeah, he's thinking of Sherlock, and um, he thinks that Sherlock's back into his life, so he's thinking of Sherlock, and then when Sherlock is off doing his mystery, he's thinking of John. So... Uh, yes, they've been apart, but now they're together again. They're still thinking of each other, and that goes to reflect the relationship. That's the friendship. It's yeah. a friendship. <laughs> the, the friendship their is friendship. A relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. That sequence, I just want to talk about how great that was. Mm-hmm. It really just speaks to the pace of the show and the, the cinematography and the editing. Everything Brilliant. about it is just so amazing. Mm-hmm. They cover a lot of ground really quickly. Yeah. And, they, and they throw in some dirty words. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they make his pot. <laughs> yeah. They make their points really, really eloquently, and they use every single element of making a TV show to do it. It's not just the script. It's not just the performances. Every single thing goes into making a point and, and really efficiently telling a great story. Yeah. Um, and I just I just love this episode. Anyone else have uh, any points you want to discuss? I think we kind of covered uh, most of it. Do we have any idea who this might you know this person at the end might be? Because I, I I'm sad to say I'm not familiar with very many of the Sherlock actual books, but I can't think of anybody bigger than Moriarty. Moriarty was his, was yeah, his greatest that's his foe, arch nemesis. Yeah, so it may be a foe from the past. It may be a wholly new invented one. Uh, it's Moriarty's brother. Well, I mean, we met Sherlock's parents this episode. Yeah. Moriarty's dad. <laughs> Maybe but, that was like BS Moriarty, and this is the real the, Moriarty. The whole Sherlock series in, in general, Sherlock has many foes. Moriarty was his most known biggest enemy, but like throughout the whole series, there are a bunch of people that are actually out to get Sherlock. Right. Have you read the book? So it could be anything. No, but I am very familiar with a lot of Sherlock stories. Mm. Okay. That's I plan true. to read the books. Yeah, let's One let's re- get bone up on some Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sir, Love him. Sir Doyle. Uh, feel free to send that to me, audience. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think that's going to be all for this week. I want to thank everybody uh, for downloading this podcast. Thank the panel for joining me. Um, we're going to be here all season long. Only two more weeks. <laughs> uh, oh man, what a season! I know. Any but, predictions? Oh yeah, let's talk predictions. <laughs> And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, I'm just going to ask this question right now. Who here on this panel has seen the next episode? I have. Okay. So... I can't make any predictions? I mean... I won't make a prediction (laughs) that I still (laughs) hold on to that doesn't have anything to do with the second episode. Beautiful. Kent, may I? Yeah, yeah, please. uh, My prediction, because I didn't watch the third episode, just to not ruin anything for myself. My prediction is still that Mary is evil by the end of this season um, and that uh, the villain is Moriarty's brother. <laughs> Those are dun, my predictions. Dun, dun. Okay. Uh, Megan Salinas. Um, well, I saw the preview for the next episode. Okay. Would you like me to tell you a little bit about that or do you just want it completely I, like, wanna, I would love to be spoiler free but the fans may want to know so go ahead. Okay. Um, the preview for the next episode it looks like John and Mary are going to get married and a lot of people are like oh, do you think Sherlock's going to be his his best man. Right. Um, and so, and it kind of looks like there's someone at the wedding is in danger of dying, like their life is in danger. And Sherlock has to solve a mystery in order to save said person. That's sort of what it looked like. You know, it was a very short right. preview. Okay. But uh, my prediction is that he's just, he's going to make a very interesting best man speech. Great. <laughs> I'm definitely down for that. Um, Marissa, anything? Um, well, I think, man, this could be really far-fetched. But at the end, with that one random guy watching the video, you, we keep hearing um, Sherlock saving John, and it, the the line is like, John, John, and John. And it made, I don't know, it made me think that maybe he's not after Sherlock, maybe he's after John. 
That's interesting. Maybe. Yeah, I, I like, hadn't thought We hear about that. John constantly being said over and over again, maybe he's after John. Interesting. That's true. I mean, yeah, who knows? Maybe the doctor made some enemies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe. Or he could be a, a serious avid, you know, uh, well, a hostage con- situation. You know, he, he's connected to Sherlock. Maybe in the end he wants John to get to Sherlock, but maybe right now, he, maybe he hates initially he's after John. Yeah. Well, I mean, John, <laughs> he was in the army. He might have let someone die who was important to this guy um, or not been able to save him. We don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting prediction. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, personally, I'm, I hate to do it, but I'm going to jump on the Mary's probably bad bandwagon. Sorry. Um, I'm going to make a prediction and say that we see Irene Adler before the end of this season. I hope so. She's so much fun. Yeah. I, would I love also that. hope so. I hope so very, very much. Love her. Um, and I, that's all I'm going to do because, honestly, I, I want to be surprised. I don't even want to think about what's going to happen this year. Um, thank you guys so much for downloading the podcast. Uh, folks, tell them where they can find you. Yell Teagle. Uh, again, on Twitter at Yell Teagle, Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L, and on the web at Yell.TV, Y-A-E-L.TV. All right. Megan Salinas. You can follow me on Twitter at The Manguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. And if I don't get back to you right away, I'm sorry. Twitter's not working on my phone right now, so as soon as I get that fixed, I'll be I'll be back on it. All right. Marissa Serafini. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. Okay, and you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M A T T L I E B E R M A N. I'm also here on AfterBuzz TV on a whole bunch of stuff. I won't remember everything, so I'm just going <laughs> to throw out a bunch of them. Uh, Almost Human uh, with Megan Salinas. We got Justified, uh, Sleepy Hollow ending this week. Uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. also with Megan <laughs> Salinas. Lost Girl coming up with Yell. Yeah. Um, Doctor Who Classics hopefully coming back sometime this winter. Uh, Justified. Uh, <laughs> Helix, if you haven't seen it, it's awesome. Totally check that out. Banshee on Cinemax. Uh, And if you're in L.A. and you love live comedy, I perform the first Sunday of every month at the I.O. West Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, 6366 Hollywood Boulevard, as a member of DJ Fawcett. Thank you guys so much for downloading the podcast. We'll see you next week. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.